we learned about recursive common table expression that it has anchor member, recursive member, termination condition, etc. And we were there trying to get that. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This channel, Avid Science, is all about trying to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, we are going to solve this question on lead code regarding number of transactions per visit. The difficulty level of this question is hard, and I'm going to share the SQL schema as well as the Panda schema in the description box below. Okay. The question reads, we are given a table called visit with two different columns, user ID and visit date. The combined column user ID and visit date is the primary key that is combination of columns with unique values for this table. Each row of this table indicates that user ID has visited the bank in visit date. We are also given a second table called transactions with three different columns, user ID, transaction date and amount. This table may contain duplicate rows. Each row of this table indicates that user ID has done a transaction of amount in transaction date. It is guaranteed that the user has visited the bank in the transaction date. That is the visits table contains the combination of user ID and transaction date in one row. Okay. A bank wants to draw a chart of the number of transactions bank visitors did in one visit to the bank and the corresponding number of visitors who have done this number of transaction in one visit. Okay. We are asked to write a solution to find how many users visited the bank and didn't do any transactions, how many visited the bank and did one transaction and so on. The result table will have two columns, transactions count, which is the number of transactions done in one visit, visits count, which is the corresponding number of users who did the transactions count in one visit to the bank. The transactions count should take all the values from zero to maximum of transactions count done by one or more users return the result table ordered by transactions count okay let's go through this example we have data in visits table as well as the transactions table so let's look at how many users have visited the bank but did not have any transaction so if we look at this right so user id 1 on 1st of january 2020 was there any transaction so user id 1 on 1st of january there is no transaction so there is one user then if you look at user ID 2, so 2nd of January, was there any? No. Then if we look at user ID 12 on 1st of January, so if we look, there is no user ID 12, did not have any transactions. So 3, then user ID 19 again, so 4. And then user ID 1 on 2nd of January 2020, so yes, there was a transaction. So up till now, 1, 2, 12 and 19 have done 0 transactions on these particular days. Right, then 2 on 3rd of January, yes, you do have a transaction. So 1 on 4th of January, yes, you do have a transaction. 7 on 11th of January, so 7 on 11th of January, yes, they have a transaction. So 9 on 25th of January, if we look at, yeah, so there are two transactions. And then 8 on 28th of January, so 8 on 28th of January. So there are four users that have not done any transactions even when they visited the bank right across all the dates so 1 2 1 on 1st of january 2 on 2nd of january 12 on 1st of january and 19 on 3rd of january don't have any transactions in the transactions table so number of transactions done 0 4 right and then similarly we can calculate for 1 2 3 and so on right so to solve this question to make sure that whether the person who visited the bank on that particular date did a transactions or not so the easier way of doing that is you can perform a join of visits table and the transactions table joining on the user ID of both the tables as well as the visit date column of visits table and transaction date of transactions table to say whether when the person visited the bank on that particular date, was there a transaction or not. And if there would be a transaction, you will find a match in the transactions table. If not, you are going to return null in the amount column that you are going to get from it. And based on that, we can say that, okay, whether there was a transaction or not. So what we are going to do is, from this table called visits aliased as v let us perform a left join on the transactions table aliased as t on v dot user id is equal to t dot user id and v dot visit date is equal to t dot transaction date Okay, now if you do this and let me return, so select all the columns from the widgets table and then we are only concerned about the amount column because 
if there is an amount so obviously if there is a match of user id and transaction in the transactions table so that means that is the amount was transacted right and therefore there was a transaction so let's re return t dot amount column and then let me go ahead and run this and let's see what do we get in our output okay so if we look at our output right now what do we have here is so you have various user ids we see we saw that right so one on first of january and so on so these combinations there are null that means there were no transactions even with even when the person visited the bank on these particular days right and so on so just by looking at this we can say that hey if the amount is coming out to be null that means there was no transaction now what we can do is for every particular date and user id we can count how many transactions were made by that particular user on that particular date because we want how many users visited the bank on a particular date and didn't do any transactions then how many visited the bank and did one transaction and so on so to achieve that what we can do is let me just go ahead and do this so hey what we are going to do is let us group by the visit date right so v dot visit date column and v dot user id column let us return both the columns so visit date and v dot user id and then what we are going to do is let us count based on whether the amount was null or not so case when your t dot amount is null then you return the value 0 else you return the value 1 end this case statements and if you perform the sum it is going to give you the number of transactions so let us alias this as number of transactions so on a particular visit date to the bank for every particular user id what were the number of transactions made by that particular user if i go ahead and run this okay so if we look at our output what do we have here is we have that on 1st of january user id 1 has now number of transactions 0 2 also had 0 and so on so on various particular days we had the number of various number of transactions made by different user now what we want is we want from 0 to maximum so number of transactions made by any user on a particular visit is 0 and the maximum is 3 by user id 9 on 25th of january 2020 so 0 1 2 and 3 how many users made that many number of transactions so you see now what we can do is we can apply the recursive common table expression because we need the numbers from 0 to the maximum and that maximum can change based on the data so you remember if i switch to the previous excel version of a question that we performed where we were trying to find out the median we learned about recursive common table expression that it has anchor member recursive member termination condition etc and we were there trying to get that okay how many numbers are appearing once twice thrice and so on so what we did was we had a recursive common table expression which basically references itself so initially we had okay select one as number so we created number equal to one and then it basically adds one to it so it increases so one and two then one two and three and so on and then we put a termination condition that whatever is the maximum frequency from one of the tables only go up till that number right the same concept we can use in our question as well so what we can do is we can have a recursive common table expression so we can save this entire thing in a common table expression so with cte as this entire thing goes into parentheses and then what we are going to do is firstly it says that it should start from zero right so it should have transactions count should take all the values from zero to maximum of the transactions count done by one or more users so let us do this return zero as number of transaction so this is your base member if i just switch back again so this is what you need to have anchor member then you need to have a recursive member then you need to have a termination condition so this is your anchor member and then what you do is union and we are going to name this as common table expression 2 right so cte2 as and when we write common table expressions everything should be in parentheses right so union and then what we are going to do is from this common table expression 2 right basically reference itself 
whatever number of transactions that you have right number of transaction just add one in it and you also need to so this is the recursive part of it and then you need to have a, ter a termination condition so what we can do is where your number of transaction is less than and then you need to write return me the maximum number of transactions from the common table expression one that we created or cte where we had basically on various visit dates and user ids how many transactions were made by various user so from this basically you get the three right so you need to have zero one two and three so three is the termination part of it so we write from this common table expression and then what we can do is we can return everything from the common table expression right so select star from common table expression two however this will not work why because there is a syntax error with this so the problem is that here we have written with cte as right and here obviously you are, would be thinking that okay recursive cte as and this would work the problem is it won't work because it what we are trying to do is we are trying to create a normal common table expression as well as a recursive common table expression along with the same with clause it won't work so that is a problem with mysql so what we have to do i can just show you like if we go ahead and run this it is not going to work you see it says runtime error and it says you have a syntax error at near recursive ct2 so the problem is the same that what i described that i am trying to make one of the common table expressions normal or non recursive but another one as recursive using the same with clause so what we can do is let us make everything recursive and since in this common table expression cte there is no recursion part right so even if i am writing with recursive cte this is not actually a recursive cte it is a static common table expression and then what i can do is i can remove this part from this and now if i go ahead and run this let's see so you see now it worked and what i have here is 0 1 2 3 so my minimum is 0 and maximum is number of transactions 3 right so now once i have that then what i can do is okay i have a table common table expression 2 where i have okay minimum to maximum number of transactions each of these rows and i can use this to join on the common table expression that i created ct where i had on various visit dates and user ids how many total number of transactions were performed so what i'm going to do is let me just you know so from this common table expression cte2 let me perform a left to join on the common table expression on cte2 dot number of transactions is equal to cte dot number of transactions and let us return everything let me go ahead and run this let's see what we get in our output so now if i look at this here what i have is so zero zero right so and ones twos and threes okay so now once i have this what i can do is can simply say group by the number of transactions that you are getting from cte2 and count the different user ids and that is going to tell you that okay number of transactions zero is four right here if i look at my output it is going to tell me that yes number of transactions zero is four number of transactions one is one two three four and five so five different two is there is no user on any particular date that had made two transactions so zero and three is one so one right so what i can do is here simply go ahead and do group by ct2 dot number of transaction return me ct2 dot number of transactions and it should be aliased as transactions count right so let me just copy this here and paste it here and then what i'm going to do is count me the number of user ids so count me cte dot user id and let's alias this as visits count and then what i'm going to do is i need to order this by the transactions count right so let me do order by transactions count okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output so yeah, this is accepted if we look at our output our output is exactly same as expected output now you might be thinking why is this you know returning zero because we saw for two there was null right so remember the basics 
when you count a particular column it returns you the number of non null values so since there was a null so there are zero non null and that is why you have a zero here if i go ahead and submit it let's see if it passes all the test cases or not so yeah, this is accepted and this is how to do it so tricky question what we basically had to do was firstly we combined the visits and transactions table on user id and the visit date and transaction date column so that we can get that for every visit date to the bank how many transactions were made by various users once we had that then we calculated from 0 to the maximum number of transactions made by any user on any visit to the bank have a table a common table expression and we use that using the recursive common table expressions once we had both of these common table expressions we performed a join so that we can count okay how many users on various occasions of the visits to the bank had various number of transactions ranging from 0 to the maximum count so this is how we do it let me know if there is a better more efficient solution to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video